Welcome to IT Visionaries, created by The Mission, your number one source for accelerated learning. On today's episode of IT Visionaries, we sit down at Dreamforce with Sadir Sura to discuss the important role of citizen developers. Sadir is the IT director at BMC. He has more than 20 years of experience in the IT field with expertise in SaaS, solution architecture, system implementation, and software development. Enjoy. IT Visionaries is brought to you by the Lightning Platform by Salesforce. The Lightning Platform is a leading cloud platform that makes building AI-powered apps faster and easier. With Salesforce, now everyone is empowered to build apps for their organization. Learn more at salesforce.com slash build apps. Welcome to another episode of IT Visionaries, the podcast where we talk to IT leaders pushing innovation. And we have an awesome episode today where we are deep, super deep diving into citizen development. Sudhir, how's it going? Doing good. Thank you very much. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah. So we are sitting above Dreamforce. It's happening below us, 170,000 people cruising around. We're on the 15th floor of the Salesforce Tower, the beautiful view of San Francisco. And you know, you are a Salesforce customer, you use Lightning Platform, who is obviously the sponsor of this podcast, who we love, but also you have a rich background in IT and have really transformed BMC with a lot of the things that you're doing with citizen development. We want to dive into all that today. Can you kind of share first off like your scope and the size of your team at BMC? Sure. Um, I run the Salesforce practice at BMC and we call it a practice because we use it as a platform for rapid application development tool. I started off my team as 15 people. Now it's almost 60 people and we're still growing. Great. And what is the scope of responsibilities for what you're in charge of? So my team is responsible for developing applications on the Salesforce platform and making sure that we have a governance model to support our business processes. With citizen development, you know, obviously there's a lot of conversations that we've had on IT Visionaries about how do you empower the workforce? How do you get people engaged with innovation? How do you seek from throughout the organization? This is one of the things that I think you've done in a way that is industry leading. And to really take that, you know, 60 person team and say, hey, we can't do everything. We know we can't. How did you kind of like come about with this idea when you were first pitching it to leadership and saying, hey, I think that our employees could actually start creating applications for us? Great question. So back in 2016, we were having a strategy meeting and my boss, David Reagan, and uh, his management team, we were talking about how do we make sure that we are not just keeping the lights on kind of thing in IT and make sure that we innovate and, and not taking orders from the business, rather go with the innovative solutions. Right. So one of the things that we looked at is, um, you know, we have a strategy of you know, go to market with the innovation and around the innovation, we came up with you know, four or five multifaceted strategies around the innovation, uh, citizen development, self-service, automation and people development, basically. And that's when we talked about having citizen development as uh, one of the uh, main pillar of our strategy for uh, going forward. For the folks that have like not done this at all, for the IT leaders that have not even looked into this, was there pushback? I mean, I would imagine that if you're to go to leadership and say, you know, hey, I know we pay our engineers a lot of money. I know we have a lot of engineers. Let's have people who don't know how to code start making applications. Was there like pushback on that or anything that you kind of saw initially? Not really. I think one of the things that the way we approached for citizen development with our business units is, IT should be focusing on more complex works and, and let business participate in some of those maintenance items, right? That way you can get things faster. So it's basically twofold, right? One is, you know, IT can focus and deliver the applications faster with a low code platform like Salesforce. And then business can replace the Excel and other access database applications with their force platform. And they can get more done during the same time free. So it's about, you know, kind of getting value out of the platform. What kind of demand were you seeing from the business for like apps on a on a like daily or weekly basis? So I think it's it's industry problem in general, right? They always demand outgrows the capacity for the IT and they are expect more from with less people, right? That's been the theme uh, these days. And 
we have been saying that in spite of my team growing, we've been saying that we're getting a lot of applications that are you know not prioritized. And we felt like by extending these to our business partners, they can take care of those some of those minor uh, maintenance items. And then we focus more on you know delivering the big projects in a timely manner. When you looked at like what a citizen developer was, like how did you, I mean, when you're drawing on a whiteboard, like what are we looking for? Is it someone who has coded before? Do they know Java? Is it someone who knows absolutely nothing? Or is it someone who's just like passionate about a problem that they're facing, like a person in HR or finance that's, that has a specific problem? Like what, what does that kind of like overall profile look like for a citizen developer at BMC? Sure. Uh, when we started the citizen development, uh, we start first with within my IT department outside of the Salesforce team. And we would like to see if we can leverage some of the Oracle, Java, .NET developers and see if I can increase my team's capacity to deliver. And that's how we started. And, and the one of the objectives is also to make sure that we use them as, you know, our you know kind of initial developers, citizen developers, to get the feedback on our governance model and that way we we can also try it out and before we expand to the large business unit and we get the feedback from my other developers that's really smart i didn't realize that you started with internal within the it organization so were you were there a lot of like learnings early on from how to to look at that absolutely i mean we we did learn a few things on how we you know want to make sure that we make it simple for business to request for a citizen app and we want to make their life easy to you know to go through the governance model and so we kind of fine tuned the governance model to a lightweight. So, that, you know, we encourage people to come forward for uh, application development from business. So what did the first application look like? I mean, I don't know if you actually remember, but I mean, was it, what did the, what did the business leader think? What did the like person think? Like what was, what were those first like kind of early days as you were testing it out look like? The first application, if I remember, it was a time off application today. And it's, it's a lot of our employees when they have to request for a time off and the managers have to approve. They have to VPN into an application that's, you know, back, sitting in the back office and, and request it. And then the managers could not see, you know, who is on PTO and what to, how to approve it. So we said, you know, I think this is a good use case. And one of the actual business person said, you know, he came up with an idea that I can develop this application. And then uh, we gave a sandbox for him and then he developed and we went through a couple of iterations and we were really surprised to see how you know innovative you know, ideas he has up on approvals and looking at the dashboard so that was our first application and we felt uh, you know it went very well so then how many have you built since then and you've been using the platform for i think two years now the citizen platform for two years yes we've been in salesforce for 10 plus years but citizen development platform for two years now we have about 60 plus applications already and you're saying that there's a time to value advantage here. Like, what does that look like? Like what, and kind of what would traditionally the speed be of your team? And then what's the speed with using citizen development? So if we look at it historically, we, uh, some of the IT projects and the pipeline that we have, sometimes some of the items, it's just the prioritization also, not just the development team. The prioritization takes precedence and then some of the requests from business are taking more than two months. You know, business was saying that, you know, I can't wait for two months to get a small thing done. And I think that's when it stuck for us that we can get, while we are working on the project without, you know, impacting the low priority items, we can extend it to business. And so those low priority items, I think that's really interesting because something like a time off application, we've all been there. It's a huge pain. Like requesting time off is a huge pain. What would be the other options there? to go buy something, like kind of the buyer build equation. Like how do you look at that and say, okay, well, it would cost X amount of dollars to just go buy an application out there for this, or we can just build it internally. Like what's the like cost benefit analysis? Are you doing that sort of work? Like We do, we do actually, we do an operationalization. We also look at the cost benefit analysis of building these applications. There's a lot of requests that comes into us. We don't take it today because uh, prior to citizen development, because it costs money. We have to go and get the funding and all. Now, with the platform, you can extend to whatever you want to build on, right? Because you already have the data model built. You already have the employee data, customer data in the platform. So it's easy to extend it. And, and also, we don't need to go through the entire SRGC process and you know all that stuff to identify a vendor. So I think that made it easy from a cycle, you know, development cycle and the kind of time to value. That's, that's where we, we see a huge improvement in the time to value. Switching gears to like, the people who are building in the business units building. Do you think it like detracts from the the time that they're actually working? Do you think that there's like unforeseen 
benefits of people being more engaged or being more empowered. You know, I mean, I think for, you know, for me personally, and from what I've talked to people that the fact that they can make a difference and do something and be creative is a value add. But I think that, you know, to the, to the business unit owner, it's like, if you're the person working in finance, like I need you hammering away on finance problems. Right. So what's, how is that kind of balance? Absolutely. So in fact, that's really a true story in our finance department. They have a lot of Excel applications and they needed help and, and they are not able to you know, go anywhere and get the help needed before. Now with this citizen development, basically they came forward and said, hey, I want to move my applications there. So it does two things for us. One is that we now have the visibility to those applications. Because you are, don't have right. visibility for Excel. Exactly. You know? yeah. And then we also minimize the business risk because if, if they leave or something happened to them, you know, we don't have the data or the application, you know, in the inventory. But now having it in Salesforce platform, uh, it's an enterprise platform, and we, you know, my team manages it. So if somebody decides to leave or, you know, those applications are no longer used, I can still have the you know, access to the data. What types of things are people making? And what, is, what have been the reaction from the citizen developers that are making those things? I think we have noticed that people now started thinking you know, out of the box. And they come up with innovative ideas nowadays. So it's not like we're coming with a business requirement. Sometimes it's as simple as, in, hey, I have this problem that I go through every day as an employee. And, you know, here is my idea. And, you know, they feel that, you know, they're contributing to the, you know, the employee experience in general. So I think we felt that a lot of people are coming with so many ideas, great ideas. So we decided to have this, what we call hackathon every quarter. So that's how we encourage our employees to come up with their ideas and then build it in a couple of days. And our executive team is actually voting them and, and moving them to production, you know, at the same weekend. So that see, that's so cool because when we've talked to some other IT leaders that have done innovation labs and different sort of things, but I think that having those type of employee hackathons, you see the results being implemented so quickly that it's very real. It's not just, you know, submitting a ticket and saying, Hey, I hope this gets done in two months. It's like Monday morning. It's live. I mean, really, you know, over the weekend, it's live. Monday morning, it could be being used by your colleagues. Absolutely. And I think that that's the, the real change for us. It's not a, just the time to value. It's also the creativity that they come up with. The problems we never solved before. Now, you know, they've been solved by themselves, honestly, and without any additional cost. That's the big thing. How does governance work? Like, how do you control all of this? Like, what's the process for, for looking at all of these ideas? Guess what? We have an app for that too in Salesforce platform. <laughs> so we built an app that, you know, basically where anybody, in, you know, in the company can go and submit a simple form. That's the first step in the governance process. And that comes to, you know, a small team that we will review. And we typically review every two days what is incoming requests. And then it's a simple checklist to see, you know, it's is it a good fit for Force platform? Is it something that, you know, these developers can do it? And based on that, we will approve it. And once we approve, each system automatically creates a sandbox for them. They get access to sandbox. They can go off and build their stuff. But along the way, we actually, you know, help them review the code. And we have a lot of automation tools to kind of, you know, code review and test it. What do you think the future looks like for citizen development? I mean, and you could say, you know, at BMC, but also with other companies that are out there. Like, what do you think? Is it something where every single person in the company gets to spend an hour a year just trying to figure something out? Or, I mean, like, what, is, what does this kind of look like in the future? Believe it or not, every company has citizen development already. It is just that they are working on Excel and, and VB and, you know, uh, and access databases, basically. That's what all the shadow IT applications they built. They are the citizen developers, to be honest. And that's what we first try to target, you know. That way, we are not taking the time out of their regular, you know, busy schedule because they are already doing it. Some of them are already building those applications. So instead, we ask them to build on Salesforce platform so we can govern and also maintain going forward. I love that. That's such a great point. You think of how many people are duplicating efforts across the company that are building the same type of spreadsheets exactly. that are building the same type of PowerPoint decks or whatever it is, or using things like survey monkey or things like that. And again, not that there's anything wrong with survey monkey, but, but the, that all of that's happening. And then, like you said, once that data is gone, it's not connected to anything and you can't really track it. And you got a great point actually there. In fact, yeah. So not only siloed applications and sometimes two business units to go and buy the same application. Yeah. And the cost involved there is very high and not knowing that the other department is using it and also the best practice. You can share the best practice of, you know, using the application. 
So if you had a magic wand and you could make the whole process smoother, what would be the Sidir magic wand that, that could make all of this just a little bit easier? I, I wish actually there is something to, you know, kind of magically shows me all the applications that we built, you know, how they're being used, what is the percentage of, I mean, we do have some dashboards today that kind of gives the metrics, you know, how, how many people are logging into these applications, but we don't have the deep metrics into, you know, how this application is helping them do today. So we would like to get something like that to see in real life if I have 100 applications sort of, you know, maybe top 30, 40 applications. So we can actually retire some applications that are not used and then, you know, kind of maintain the system going forward. How do you market this internally? I mean, is it company-wide email? Is it, how are you sharing this and disseminating it internally so that people like know this is going on? We have multiple ways to do that. I mean, we do some newsletters for our sales organization and marketing organization. Uh, across the company, we do advise this during the sales kickoffs and other events that I have. And our employee experience VP, she really you know, supports these activities development and that's how we are able to communicate to our employees the opportunities that they have to contribute to this you know the applications what's your favorite app that you've seen built without no doubt it's the volunteer app it's not just the technology it's how it touches the you know employees and they feel proud that they were able to make a change by contributing to some of the volunteer opportunities so when we launched the volunteer opportunities i can't believe how many people actually reached out to to our team and said, hey, this is, you know, whoever came up with this idea, it's a great you know, idea. I could see the opportunities out there now in one shot and I can, you know, participate in the volunteer, you know, whether it is a time or money or whatever I can do it. And I also see that as a company, you know, how we are doing in the market generally, right? And helping others in need. That's really cool. Any other final thoughts on kind of things we didn't touch on? No, I think one of the things I would say is Trailhead has really helped us a lot in terms of, you know, making sure that the our citizen developers are trained properly before, you know, we kind of give them the access to the platform. That was one of the biggest kind of differentiator between other platforms and, you know, Salesforce as a local platform where every, you know, anybody in the company can go and learn without an you know, additional cost. I think that would be a big, huge thing for us to run the citizen development. Yeah. That's great. I mean, and it's really having all of those tools and, you know, you don't have to run a company-wide training. You can just say, exactly. hey, go go check this out. I mean, we use that not only for citizen developers, actually, in, in my organization, we make sure that, you know, everybody, so as part of the people development, we make sure that everybody takes about 80 hours of training per quarter. Oh, wow. That's so, a and lot. that's actually part of their, you know, performance review. So that way we can make sure that they are up to date on the technology and they can have, you know, work on latest technology and deliver more value for the business. Wow, that's each quarter? That's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. That's really cool. Let's do the lightning round here. So lightning round, fast and easy questions. I did not share these with you ahead of time. No idea what's coming. Fast and easy, not unlike the lightning platform. Number one, what app are you using on your phone that is the most fun? Volunteer. Yeah, that's an easy one. That's softball. What's your favorite time-saving tool? Expense submission. Do you have a favorite use of AI or chatbots that you've seen recently? In service, in the, yeah, in service, we start using pilot of chatbot. We're just joking on the uh, on the last podcast that everybody loves to use emojis with chatbots. Are you seeing some emoji use? Some, but we are a business, you know, com in a B two B company, so we don't use a lot of those, uh, you know, uh, text messages. But yes, you know, I think our agents like it. How about favorite podcast or recent book that you've read or listened to? I read a lot about the marketing, mm -hmm. you know, uh, branding and digital marketing, I think is what I've been reading recently, podcast-wise. Favorite one-day getaway where you live in Texas? Beach. Oh, yeah? Which beach? We have a couple of beaches that are far, but we go to South Padre. I oh, yeah, South Padre is great. Do you have a favorite Dreamforce moment? I think the keynote, trying to get into the keynote is the, <laughs> is the fun part. What technology are you most excited about? I think the voice technology is, is, going, is a game changer to me. Why do you say that? Because, you know, I, I use it a lot for even, you know, Google Maps and any, anywhere in my application. And I think a lot of people on the go nowadays, nobody wants to, you know, use the text or, you know, use their hands. I think voice and over the period, in, to be honest, I think the technology has evolved a lot and it can understand any accent, you know, any, I mean, it works very well with business or personal applications. You know, one of the things that I'm excited about with Salesforce announcing the Einstein and Siri thing is AirPods are so great that now you can just leave one AirPod in 
and you can speak into it, it's like, that's just great. Any advice for, you know, first time IT director? I, I would say, I think, uh, keep an open mind. Don't go with the traditional IT, you know, mindset of keep the lights on kind of concept. One of the things that you, you know, you always look at in the current business, like Airbnb and Uber, where business is transforming to more digital and then changing the game. I think one of the things we have to do is think outside the box and make sure that, you know, you have innovation as part of your job role. That's it for the lighting round. Fast and easy questions like the lighting platform. We talked about it a lot today, but as our listeners know, salesforce.com slash build apps is where you go to learn more. Anything else? No, I think we covered very well. Thank you for awesome. having me here. Thanks so much. And we appreciate your time. We'll be talking again soon. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank you again to our friends at Salesforce. IT Visionaries is brought to you by the Lightning Platform by Salesforce, a leading cloud platform that makes building AI-powered apps faster and easier. With Salesforce, now everyone can build apps for their organization. Learn more at salesforce.com slash build apps.